I know he's an attorney. I called him. Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 5th, 2023 uh, Baltimore County Planning Board. It is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford. I'm the chair, and I will now start the meeting with a roll call to account for the board members that we have that are present. And I'm very grateful that all of you are here and looking forward to a great year. Um, when you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Arey. Aye. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Mr. Fotis. Aye. Ms. German. Aye. Mr. Heckman. Aye. Mr. Heinel. Here. <laughs> Mr. Halipka. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Perlow. Aye. Ms. Panero. Aye. Mr. Warren. Aye. Okay, Bev's here. <laughs> <laughs> Miss <laughs> Wolfson, on that note. Miss who? Wolfson. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all. But before we say the Pledge of Allegiance, I want to uh, first thank Henry Caligari that has served on our board. He has now stepped down. And I want to, want to welcome uh, wonderful Emily Brophy. I'm very grateful to have known her for quite a few years. And she's going to be a wonderful addition to our board. Sit next to Howard and keep him under control. <laughs> I have a little room on my right. <laughs> Emily, you want to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you, Nance. Um, so I am. You're speaking. Oh. Oh, you put. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Thanks, Nance. So uh, my name is Emily Brophy, as she said. My background is commercial real estate. So I've been in the commercial real estate business for about 16 years now. Um, I worked for a large multi-billion dollar REITs, such as Brookfield and Westfield, which is actually how Nance and I met. And I currently um, co-own a business with my brother. Um, we operate commercial real estate throughout the eastern region of the United States, and four of them are in Baltimore County. So I'm very excited to be here and happy to serve with everybody. And we're very, very happy to have you. Thank you. Okay, now um, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Bensley, are there any changes to the agenda? No changes, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. In the December 29th, 2022 email, you received draft minutes from the November 17th, 2022 <coughs> meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those minutes? Are there any corrections? If not, may I entertain a motion to accept the minutes as motion. so. Okay, thanks, Doug. All right. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. First on the agenda, we'll have a pre presentation from Ms. Jen Nugent of the Baltimore County Department of Planning on updates to the Comprehensive Manual of the Development Policies, CMDP. After Ms. Nugent has filled us, finished the introduction, I will call for a motion to set a public hearing on that subject matter. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Nugent. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. Happy New Year. Um, the beginning of my presentation may be repetitive for some of you seasoned veterans up here, but since we have some new people, I thought I'd just kind of recap um, the CMDP and this current work effort that the department is taking on. Um, the Baltimore County Comprehensive Manual CM of Development Policies, or CMDP, is enabled by Section 504.2 of the Baltimore County Zoning Regulations and is intended to codify in a, an appropriate and practical form a comprehensive manual of the land use and development policies and zoning regulations. 
The CMDP is intended to include provisions set forth in the BCZR, subdivision regulations, and other regulations or content as deemed relevant by the Department of Planning and Planning Board. Further, Section 504.2 BCZR states the manual also may include such other matter as the Department of Planning or the Planning Board deems relevant. Any revisions or changes to the CMDP must first be presented to the Planning Board and then on to the County Council for approval. Uh, the proposed manual or change shall take effect 45 days after submission to the Council unless within the 45-day period the County Council objects. In such case, the manual changes requires legislative approval. Um, you may recall that uh, planning staff presented to you in April of 2021 the special areas and procedures section of the CMDP, which has been fully active and utilized since its passing at that time. Um, the original CMDP was adopted by the Baltimore County Planning Board in 1972 and subsequent amendments occurred in 88, 92, and 2006. The CMDP is a robust, robust document with many useful standards, guidelines, and regulations that the county reviewing agencies utilize to help steer commercial and residential development within the goals of the master plan, as well as the Baltimore County zoning regulations. It is also intended for use by the public when creating development projects throughout the county. The department does of planning does rely heavily on this document in the absence of any adopted design guidelines for any specific area within the county. And the general guidelines and principles outlined within and related to residential and commercial development help in leveraging desired design outcomes. This is what we lovingly call the old format. In its current form, the document exists as a black and white static manual without the ability to click on links or references and the quality is not desirable compared to current publications found on the county's website. Some of the content of the CMDP has been affected by legislation passed for the last several years and so in some instances the text may need changing or removal altogether. This next section update that we have for you today um, effort took on a slightly more involved role by staff than the appendix section that was previously presented to you, and, um, which was mostly to place in some existing design guideline manuals that had already been adopted, such as the DTD guidelines, as well as updating some existing appendices with current past legislative acts, like the adoption of additional DRP review areas. The entire commercial development section has been changed from its previous version. Some items were recategorized or redefined, such as shopping centers and power centers, while others were combined or eliminated, such as office compatibility. I have up here, if you can see it, and I know you all have been provided a copy, but this is kind of the table of contents from the commercial section. So I'm speaking to what's been eliminated from that and I'll highlight a few points from there. The office compatibility section was removed as the section did not serve much need in explaining the compatibility requirement of the Baltimore County Code, and was deemed not useful by staff or outside consultants and applicants. With the new format of the commercial section, similar to the um, section that had already been presented to you, Subsections have been created to individually highlight definitions and desired design components of the respective types of development. The subsections of the commercial development categories are main street development, freestanding, shopping centers slash mall development, office development, and mixed use slash TOD development. As the county moves forward in thinking about future development throughout, planning has a responsibility to shepherd and encourage current and future best practices for commercial and residential development, particularly with regard to the county's strategic plan goal of sustainability. The stated goal is to ensure the long-term sustainability of the county's public and internal government infrastructure and safeguard the county's ecology and climate. Therefore, a summary about sustainable development has been added into the introduction, as well as some sustainable guidelines interspersed throughout the subsections of this section. 
Where necessary, hyperlinks have been added for ease of access to relevant information. Now, just wanted to highlight a few of the sections to demonstrate the work effort and updates. Section A is Main Street, already existing in the CMDP. Um, each subsection has been formatted and, and outlined with largely the same content with some additions as determined by staff. As I said, although already within the existing CMDP, the Main Street section was enhanced to include a description of the Main Street development concept, as well as, as, well as highlighting the Maryland Main Street program, which is a program of the Maryland State Department of Housing and Community Development. It strives to strengthen the economic potential of Maryland's traditional Main Streets and neighborhoods. Each subsection follows a newly formatted outline of content, starting out with an overview or an explanation or narrative of the development concept, followed by several design guidelines, categories, which include site planning, landscaping and open space, circulation and parking, architecture and building features, signage and lighting. A lot of thought also went into how best to outline each section so that when utilizing the CMDP reference can be made without comprehensive pagination and instead to the specific content reference, therefore making ongoing updates much easier as a live document. What I've done here on this slide is I have some red stars here. So I was trying to say, for example, if I were to make reference to pedestrian accessibility comments with regard to shopping centers, I would, follow, I would reference in my reporting CMDP section three, um, capital letter C, lowercase letter B, B, site planning, and then let number two, and then A. I wanted to make it a little um, formalized. Although mixed use has always been included within the CMDP, the department has taken the development concept into the modern and future context of the county, recognizing the need for transit-oriented developments throughout the county. The infrequency of mixed uses within the suburban, and this is a quote from the existing CMDP about mixed use. The infrequency of mixed uses within the suburban urban context has resulted in more auto dependence and a loss of the sense of neighborhood. As the populations and demands for housing grow, it is necessary to promote new strategies for mixed use development. As stated in the current CMDP version of the commercial section, quote, the term mixed use encompasses more than the usual mix of commercial uses, such as retail, office, or industrial uses. A true mixed use project should also include residential uses as a key component, whether owner or renter. Elderly and affordable housing should also be considered, and that is from the current CMDP. Objectives of successful mixed-use development align with Baltimore County's goals outlined in Baltimore County Enterprise Strategic Plan, um, which are to ensure that all residents have access to high-quality and affordable housing and cultural and recreational opportunities. Adding the concept of, transit, of TOD or transit-oriented development to the mixed-use development section helps with the achievement of vibrant communities sustainability and equity because a mixture of housing, retail, and commercial establish, establishments and office buildings are to be, and this is, this is per the kind of definition of a TOD. These types of developments are to be located within a half mile radius of quality public transportation and along with amenities and open space forms a walkable neighborhood. The intent of such development could also coincide with the goal of the state of Maryland for promoting transit-oriented development that is designed to maximize the use of transit, walking, and bicycling. <coughs> this section of the CMDP provides general guidelines for creating mixed-use developments of any scale and thoughtfully details design guidelines to achieve the best possible mixed use. So those were just a couple of the sections to show what we had, had added in and hadn't been in there previously. As you can see, this section has an orange color scheme. Our previous version had a blue color scheme. We'll have another color scheme 
when we get to the residential. So that concludes my introduction. If anybody has any questions, Thank you, Mr. board members, any of you have any questions or comments? Mr. Perlow. Seems you focus not on POV, uh, sort of looking at the county. You've got Metro and Old Mills, which is a true POV operating mm -hmm. very much. Possibly, you could argue about that. Maybe has the planning board looked at any of these to sort of have their own general thought process as to whether they've been successful or not successful? I know they've talked about all over the state, but they haven't been that many that have been built that are really adjacent to decent uh, transportation. You know, they've got more of it in a light, line, a light rail and the rail. So I'd like to sort of feel, I guess, at some point as we go through this going forward. We understand how the planning staff thinks about the way we want to do that. One of my comments would be that uh, we have to look at it also in terms of not just focus on the next project. Quite honestly, as we move forward with the master plan, uh, that's going to be the element that we have to look at as well. Um, and it doesn't always have to be heavy on that focus to do it. Comparing us to Prince George's Montgomery, where it's very active, we built a couple of major contracts, transit oriented, and it's pun intended, uh, and it's involved in the region. So we have a different kind of contract that we try to address. I think what Jim was doing is funny now that he's giving emphasis that that place we just talked about, the shopping center, is going to be the next road center as well. Um, as you look at the document itself, it I'd like to know that planning staff believes in it for Baltimore County. Absolutely, we don't have a million new subway stops that Prince George's is going to have. They don't have it yet, but they're coming. Uh, Montgomery has some. You know, we had a little bit of major discussion in the communities about um, apartments at um, uh, some of the shopping centers to make them that. And you know, I don't think we approved that many of them the last time. I'm just looking ahead with comprehensive zoning coming and knowing that we're going to have these issues. I know they just announced the one at the Ripley Road is to be a dirt bridge shopping center. Well, that, that there's a, a POD designation request for that location. It was not the decision on that, on that request. But yes, I, I would say that uniformly we do see this as a very good location to produce the transit. Especially as we develop land and we build the transportation stops, it's going to be a very good And even in the station, there's some stuff done with the state there. I think we even maybe move the, uh, the bark line a little bit closer to that and work that out. Well, that has the designation for that TOD has been eliminated um, because the current owners actually are building. Governor probably comes up with some plan to possibly bring the red line back. I think there's, that's, there's still a lot of conversation about how we create that use of that connection. Okay. At some point, maybe just a little report from you all as to what the planning staff feels about it so we understand. Well, I think part of it comes through in the CMDT, frankly. I think this is one of the mechanisms in which we're putting forward that this is something that we can really start. 
I think that the CMP will, will bring a lot of information forward too. Yeah, and that's just as I highlighted in this <coughs> the big section already does touch on the automobile I guess my only I'll finish with this. My <coughs> concern is we sort of listen to you guys for direction. So well, I guess I want to hear more direction as we go forward. Um, that planning people, I'm not a planner, okay, no education for it or anything else, but that we get you know, your your feelings as to where it should be, what it should be, um, those kind of things, because I think it does affect you know comprehensive rezoning as well as we want to look at that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Perlow. Does any of the other board members have a question? If not. Thank you, Ms. Nugent. Thank you for that information, Mr. Lafferty. Are there any are there any other questions? Matt, I'd just ask for a point of clarification that this is just reformatting of existing policy. There has been some uh, enhanced explanation or enhanced updating. Mm -hmm. And then things that I touched on in other actions. OK. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nixon. Any other questions? If not, may I entertain a motion? Sure. Uh, be it moved that the Baltimore County Planning Board set a public hearing regarding the updates to the Comprehensive Manual of Development Policies for Thursday, January 19th, 2023 at 4.45 p.m. Thank you. Uh, may I have a second? And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. As a reminder, the pub, there will be a public hearing where we're going to be in person on January 19th. So we'll be here, Todd. <laughs> well, I will not be there that night. <laughs> Ms. Bensley will now fill us in on legislation that recently passed by the County Council following our last meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bill 7422, zoning regulations, off-street parking requirements for the purpose of amending the required number of off-street parking spaces for certain types of commercial and service uses and generally relating to parking. Bill 7522, zoning regulations, uses permitted in the manufacturing light zone, residential uses on adjacent tracks for the purpose of amending certain requirements for residential uses in the ML zone adjacent to certain commercial commercial town center core CT districts under certain circumstances and generally relating to uses permitted in the ML zone. Bill 7622, zoning regulations, uses permitted in the business roadside commercial town center core district for the purpose of permitting certain business roadside commercial town center core district uses in the BR zone in specific circumstances and generally relating to the BR and BRCT zones. Bill 8422, the comprehensive zoning map process, departmental report to planning board for the purpose of allowing the Department of Planning to have the benefit of input from the planning board's public hearing before it makes its recommendations to the board regarding a proposed zoning regulation or map modifying notice requirements for a public hearing and generally relating to the procedures for the comprehensive zoning map process. And resolution 4722, support application, state of MD, designation, regional institute strategic enterprise, rise zone, Towson University. 
a resolution in support of an application to the state of Maryland for the designation of a rise zone. The purpose of the program is to access institutional assets that have a strong and demonstrated history of commitment to economic development and re revitalization in the communities in which they are located. Qualified institutions and local governments develop a targeted strategy to use the institutional assets and financial incentives to attract businesses and create jobs within the zone. Towson University was accepted by the state as a qualified institution in 2018. The university is now applying for a designation of a rise zone at the current Towson Com Commercial Revitalization District, excluding the area of the Towson CRD north of I-695. Baltimore County is supportive of the application to designate it as a rise zone, thereby making qualified businesses located in the zone for certain tax credits. The property tax credits granted may not be combined with any other tax credits or payments in lieu of taxes assessed for any of the qualified businesses or properties located within the designated zone. Businesses deemed as retail, restaurants, or bars are not eligible for use of the rise zone incentives. And that concludes the report. Thank you so much, Ms. Bensley. Well, this is the conclusion of our agenda, but we're going to reconvene for a public hearing at 5 o'clock. Do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. So we have four minutes. Four minutes. So make it fast, whatever you want to do. Use it wisely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. It is now five o'clock. Yeah,
All right, Mr. Heinel, we're starting the meeting. <laughs> and good evening again, and welcome to the Baltimore County Planning Board public hearing for the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Community Plan. The public hearing is now called to order. I'm the chair, Nancy Hafford, and I'm going to introduce uh, the, our board members. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Avery. Aye. Ms. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Mr. Fotis. Ms. German. Aye. Mr. Heckman. Aye. Mr. Heinel. Aye. Mr. Halipka. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Perlow. Aye. Ms. Panero. Aye. Mr. Warren. Aye. Ms. Wolfson. Aye. <laughs> Thank you all. At the November 17th, 2022 meeting of the Planning Board, Mrs. Daphne Daly and Mrs. Alexander Liam of the Department of Planning introduced the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Community Plan. Tonight, Ms. Liam is here to further present to the, uh, the plan to the board. Following Ms. Liam's presentation, members of the public will have an opportunity to speak on this plan. Please join me and welcome Ms. Liam. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, today's presentation follows the November 17th introduction of the plan. At this meeting, I provided information on the background for the update, on the community uh, input process, and on key issues that are in the plan. So today I'll briefly go over this again as a reminder, and then I'll additionally provide you with information on the specific goals that are found um, within the plan. Following my presentation, uh, you can expect community representatives present today to go into more detail on the community plan process itself in order to demonstrate how the plan reflects the community's vision for the area. They'll also touch on major accomplishments from the previous plans and the implementation process for the 2020 plan. Okay. Um, so the plan covers the Ruxton, Riderwood, Lake Roland area community on the map before you. Uh, the plan is an update of the 2010 plan, which was adopted on February 22nd, 2011, as part of the 2020 master plan. The updating of the 2010 plan was authorized under the October 19th, 2020 council resolution and will be an amendment to the 2020 master plan and carry forward to become part of the 2030 master plan once it is adopted. So the development and updating of the plan is led by the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Improvement Association and every 10 years, the association develops a community plan to track with the Baltimore County master plan process. The 2020 plan will prepare for the upcoming 2024 comprehensive zoning map process, and the association also updates the plan every 10 years in order for it to serve as a living group blueprint um, to guide it in meeting the expectations of the community. So in order to update the plan, the association formed a committee composed of its board members to guide the process. And as part of this process in May 2020, the, associ the association emailed a survey to over 1,000 residents and businesses, asking them to rate the importance of 12 key issues in the community. With over 481 responses, the five highest rated issues were chosen as the core issues for the plan, and I'll be going over those shortly. Uh, in order to gather further input, a draft of the plan was posted on the association, association's website for ongoing comment, and a community virtual town hall was held on May 17th. The county also contributed to the update process uh, with several departments reviewing the plan. So consistent with the uh, Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Improvement Association's mission, the community plan's goal is to assist in protecting, preserving, and enhancing the community through stewardship, education, and advocacy. The association plans to accomplish this by focusing on the following five key issues, which are crime and public safety, code enforcement, development, and zoning, the Falls Road, Road Corridor and development, flooding, and sewer lines. Before I go into the goals associated with these issues, I'll quickly compare the focus points from the 2010 plan to the 2020 plan in order to highlight key changes. Uh, please note that the 2010 focus points uh, were not ranked by importance based on the survey results the same way the 2020 ones were. So public safety is highlighted as a focus point in both plans. 
Uh, although the community itself experiences very little crime, it remains a top concern for residents given incidents of crime in surrounding areas. Code enforcement development and zoning has many of the same goals as the 2010's plan focus point, which is subdivision and infill. These uh, are a major concern for this community as it relates to maintaining the existing character of the area. The Falls Road Corridor and Development Focus Point expands upon the 2010's plan focus on Bear Hills with updates to the goals and actions that were found in that plan. And finally, both flooding and sewer lines are new focus points that were included, included following uh, flooding and rainstorm events that occurred in the community over the past 10 years. So I'll now go into the five key issues that were identified by the community and that are uh, at the core of the plan, starting with crime and public safety. So as I mentioned, the community itself doesn't experience very much crime, but it is a top concern for residents. So with this in mind, the association's first goal is to recognize that safety is of the highest importance to the community and give it constant monitoring and diligence. So this involves working with precinct, precinct six to be aware of current crime occurrences and trends. Traffic safety is also a concern, with one of the goals being to maintain the safety of roads and neighborhoods by identifying traffic safety issues and possible actions to address these. The second fo focus point is code enforcement, development, and zoning. So, like I said, these are a concern for the community as they relate to maintaining the existing character of the area. So in order to accomplish this, the association has set goals to monitor requests for variances and assist neighborhoods with code enforcement and zoning variance issues. And when not consistent with current zoning, discourage high density residential development in the community. As it relates to the county's larger development process, the association will participate in the co comprehensive zoning map process and design review panel process. The association has also set a goal to develop an invasive plant and vine eradication strategy for the community. The third focus point is the Falls Road Corridor and development. So there was significant interest expressed in the community survey on the development of this corridor. And so the association will continue to work on relevant actions from the 2010 plan that are related to these, uh, for example, by continuing to pursue additional access points to Lake Roland Park from Falls Road. And for any new development in the area, the association will monitor compliance with state and local regulatory laws. Of particular interest is the Holland's organic site that's on uh, Falls Road. The fourth focus point is flooding, which ranked high as a key issue for the community, like I said, following flooding and rainstorm events that have occurred over the past 10 years. To address this, the association has set its first goal to form a committee to formulate and drive remedial actions that will make a meaningful difference over the long term when it comes to flooding. This flood committee will review, understand, and monitor flood mapping, water flow, and water quality impact data for the community. The association will also look at water quality impact data and advocate for additional flood impact accommodations and solutions with Baltimore County and the state of Maryland. The association will advocate for flood mitigation solutions within and outside the community and focus on political and governmental advocacy regarding the impact of flooding and stormwater management. Finally, it'll educate the community and elected officials on practical flood, practical flood prevention steps. And so the fifth and final focus point are sewer lines. So similar to flooding, uh, this is a top concern because of the heavy storm events over the last 10 years that have stressed the capacity of sewage pipes, which has led to leakage and sanitary, sanitary sewer overflows in the community. To address this, the, the association will focus on improving communications with county officials regarding sewer shed remediation and rehabilitation. It'll actively monitor county-led sewage, sewage system studies and identify potential problematic pipe segments in the area. And finally, the association will act as an information resource of sewer rehabilitation information for the community. So with these five key issues and goals in mind, you can expect community representatives present today to go into how these issues and goals were developed to align with the community's vision for the area. And they'll also touch on major accomplishments from the previous plans, as I said, and the implementation process for the 2010, 2020 plan. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Have any sense why that disappeared as an issue? Uh, I do not, but perhaps um, community representatives that are present today. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other questions? 
Mr. Perlow. Reading the motion that we're being proposed <laughs> to vote on, I guess I'm a little confused. This isn't done by planning, this is done by the association. But we're being asked to forward this on to the council for approval. That's right. Yeah. Like I said, it was um, the county did contribute to the update process by several departments that reviewed it, but it was developed by the association with the input. And just a general question. Here. I was just going to say there was a resolution back in 2010 that authorized the community to update the 2010 plan and then have it forwarded on to the county board for review and then on to county council for final approval. Thank you. Any other questions? What's happened with, I guess, the I'll call it a large project that was in the general area, Bear Hills near the retail, whatever else we have any idea how that's moved along or not moved along or anything. There's no reason to doubt that. I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be up in a moment, won't you, sir? Thank you. The zoning was changed to delete the residential out of, out of that. Correct. Yeah. Mr. Warren. And what, I guess I'm an hour on this. I don't know what the, what the, the purpose of the planning is. How this ended up So we'll have community representatives talk about the implementation process. Um, but early on when I when I did talk about, you know, the goal of having the community plan and updating it every 10 years is for it to guide the associations. Um, so or, I mean, as a community planner, when I, you know, review development proposals or zoning changes and things like that, if it is in an area that's covered by a community plan, we'll look into that community plan to see if there's any um, overlap there. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Halipka. Um, sort of a two-part question. I know that we have community plans for lots of other communities. So how different is this in the sense that my impression was that, that now when they do community plans elsewhere, that it's often very much led by the planning department. Do we have other places, though, where it's led by sort of a neighborhood association? I'm just curious how common that is. I'm not sure. Um, Mr. Lafferty, can you speak on this matter? I don't think it's common. Very few actually have the... Absco. Developing a plan. Often, we want to see public participation. We want to see it. Uh, but if it's indigenous, it comes up from the community. We'll work with them as well to viable and useful to the Barnes plan. Actually, the community planners always reference community. for us as well and it becomes an advocacy tool as well I guess but by the language in this one thank you Mr. Lafferty so this is not the only one of its kind yeah. there are really unique. Yeah. I think that as we have a larger department in the past you know, you know we can have staff um, and I think that as as that has changed here and a lot of these plans have gotten really old, uh, communities have found that they, they miss having a more updated plan and in working with them, we've been able to help them update it. You know, they're not really doing this in a vacuum. We met with this group before they started. We've asked a lot of questions. We've asked a lot of them as far as the input and to document things. Um, you know, just like with Kathy's group, we would do the same. Um, but we would also, again, run it through other agencies that, that might have comment about it. So we've tried to make sure that we've vetted it on our end as well, even though we were not 
um, leading the, the update. Thanks, Ms. Mante. Any other questions? It, but Ms. Wolf, it, it doesn't it become incorporated into the master plan? If it's adopted by we, the right. planning board would pass. We would pass it on to the county council for right. adoption as a part of the master plan. Yes. Thank you. Correct. Any other questions? <laughs> if not, uh, next we'll have a brief presentation by Mr. Edward Murray. Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Improvement Association board member and head of the Community Planning Committee. Mr. Murray, you will have five minutes. Great. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, and my name is uh, Edward Andrew Murray, and I go by Andy, but um, thank you. I uh, headed up the uh, planning uh, committee for the last two years, so it's been a very extensive process. I uh, have recently been working with Alex Bill Spinsky before uh, he left. Um, and I think Alex covered a lot, but I was asked to kind of go through the process of how we got to this plan. And uh, obviously, we had the prior plan from 10 years as a foundation, but we really wanted to make this relevant to the next 10 years. So we uh, formed a committee within the board. Um, and then we went out with a uh, survey. We probably spent a month or two with, uh, there was a, a member of our board who is very familiar with developing surveys. So we developed what we thought was a very extensive survey, uh, and we sent it to everybody in the community that we could reach out with, too. Not, our, not only our members, but non-members that we had email addresses we also put up some public notices and growls or wherever. So we, uh, we sent out uh, approximately 1,000 surveys, and we got uh, 488 responses. So we were actually very pleased with that. We, um, the committee looked at, um, we went out with 12 issues and then an open-ended question in case there was an issue we missed. And... Um, we, we were very pleased with the uh, response we had. And then, uh, I, as Alex went through, uh, the, the five important issues surfaced. Uh, crime and public safety, even though it's not, a, fortunately, it's not really an issue in Ruxton Riderwood, um, it's always top, top of the list. I'm told by the survey people, it's always top of the list because people just are very... Uh, uh, diligent about crime. And then um, the other issues, I think, you know, no surprise. What the two issues that didn't make it to the top five but were very close were uh, invasive plant management. They're just vines everywhere, growing everywhere, and people are concerned. They're pulling trees down. So, and we're, the association is actually beginning to work on that, even, even though it's not in the plant. Um, and uh, forest preservation and deer, deer management, basically deer. <laughs> because there are deer just everywhere, as you all are probably familiar, and, and the harm they do to our gardens and the danger they do to driving, et cetera. So uh, I guess, you know, to close, I, I just, we feel we have a very re relevant plan. We had a virtual uh, town hall that we got about 20, um, residents to participate in. We've been posting the plan for the last 10 years. Three or four very vocal uh, community residents that have provided feedback. So we've been, I, I think we've been as transparent as possible, and I think we've got a very relevant plan. And, you know, we look forward to, um, we advocate to the county to try to assist us in, in certain actions. A lot of the actions are ours. You know, that we're going to be the ones that attack the vines. Um, but there's other things we really need the county support on. So it, it's great to get this approved. Um, hopefully I haven't used all my five minutes because I think I was, uh, Jeffrey Budnitz, was, um, who was a board member, is going to respond to two of the questions. Um, and then Jamie Kahn, our president here, is uh, just going to briefly speak about how we're going to imp implement this plan. Yes. So I can't talk for two hours. Okay. Uh, you, not in this house. 
Can I use some of his? Yeah, go ahead. So I've been involved with Jeffrey Budnitz, lifelong resident of the Roland Park area. Uh, also, a uh, 24 year involvement with the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Improvement Association and a founding board member of the Lake Roland Nature Council. I cannot reinforce enough how important community plans are that are approved and adopted in allowing us to effort to move forward with positive change. I'll give you an example in the 2001 plan, one of our target goals was the rehabilitation of what was Robert E. Lee Park. Uh, we had a culminating uh, point in the late 1990s where a woman was shot in the back of the head to be executed on the fishing pier. Baltimore City was not managing the asset at all. Huge amount of fecal waste from off-kept dogs, erosion, environmental hardship, drug dealing, prostitution, all of that. Our adopted plan culminated in 08 into a lease with the city, six and a half million of investment, three from the county, three and a half million from the state. Uh, very active involvement with Jim Smith, Fred Homan. Some people might know Fred, not know Fred. I'll leave it at that. And also moving forward with Kevin Kamenitz. To date, Cocktail napkin calculation, 11 and a half million of investment in Lake Roland. We've grown it from 432 acres to 503. We incorporated the light rail uh, Falls Road, activated a Bush era shovel ready stimulus project, doubled the size of the parking lot and created transit oriented uh, recreation. None of that money would have occurred without a validated plan. So when you brought up the issue of bike and pedestrian, one of the issues that Andy touched upon is we had a 2000 plan. In 2010, we looked at what worked, what didn't work, what was still relevant, what should we push forward into the next cycle. One of the focuses that we've had, which is now a byproduct of 120,000 in state money, 30,000 in county money that was just approved, was the study to connect the Jones Falls Trail to the NCR Trail through Lake Rowan. That would not be able to occur without that Falls Road light rail parking lot connection, the boardwalk into the park, and the connection through the park. So it becomes cumulative, the things that we accomplish. You brought up the Blue Stem project, which was very contentious. Our project focus for 2010 was the positive infill redevelopment. As you know, no one wants any development beyond the Ertle. But when you have a blighted industrial area like we have in, or had in Bear Hills and go to it today, that's all very positive infill redevelopment for higher and better uses from blighted industrial to investment firms, to flower shops, to restaurants, community amenities. That's a byproduct. Do I have more time or am I done? Done? No, but I'm just telling you how important these plans are for us to soldier on to get them implemented. And I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry. Uh, Jamie? Good evening. I'm Jamie Kahn, the president of the association. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, willingness to consider what we've done and what we continue to do. This is our third plan, we believe. Um, so. I remember being on the board 20 some years ago and putting this plan in place. Um, and the way we enforce it is very simple. Um, we have a board, but we also have committees. We have committees assigned to each of those tasks. What this really enables us to do is set guidelines on what we do and, and really communicate with our community as to what's gonna be okay and what's not gonna be okay as far as changes in the community. We are active members in design review, one of the uh, only a handful of communities that have been part of design review for substantial changes residentially. Um, and this really just gives the county an idea of what we as a community want for our own and what we're trying to do within our own community. So when we deal with planning, when we have a specific issue, we refer to that th this, this plan and say, based on this plan, these are the positions we've taken in the past, and this is where we are as far as this current project or what have you. So it really sets the precedent so everybody knows where this community stands. We communicated internally with our own community, obviously within our board, and this is our chance to bring it out to the county so that we're all on the same page when we deal with specific issues. So 
It's extremely important to us. We think it's worth the time and the effort that we spend in doing it. We think it's a tool that the county can use uh, when we're working on projects together. So I think that's, that's really our way of effectively communicating. Um, I do want to note that there was a section of Blakehurst um, and mission helpers. We've taken that out. We've already come to an agreement between the neighbors, uh, Blakehurst and mission helpers. So that's all been dealt with. So we can move on from that project. And that again has been uh, that, that uh, res those restrictive covenants have been agreed to and have been submitted to the county. So any questions for me or any of our group? Um, just a quick question. Um, sure. Out of curiosity, how many <coughs> projects are floating to the About 3,500 homes. 3, well, we, we sent it out, the, the, we, as we noted, we sent it out to about 1,000. We hear from about uh, just about half, about 480 members responded back. We have a board of about of approximately 20 people. So what we do is we take that information that we get from, from that survey, and then that's what becomes our community plan. So, you know, we're certainly not talking to 100%, but if you take a look at surveys and effectiveness of surveys, that's about as good as you're going to get. So we're pretty pleased with that. The challenge we have, like everybody else, especially in this environment, is less in-person meetings during the planning of this than we would normally have had. But we did do them <laughs> via Zoom. We also did emails and, uh, and other means. And you know, we're not making dramatic changes from where we were 10 years ago. So I think we've been very consistent in our positioning as a community. So I don't think there's anything here that is terribly controversial. There's certainly members of us that want to, uh, members of our, of our community that want us to take a much more aggressive stand as far as lack of development in our community because of the sewer system and the flooding and the fact that remains a concern for this community and they'd like us to say, you know, no additional construction. Uh, that's not a position the board is willing to take, but we are, we are supportive of managed growth and that's really what we've done in the past, especially in the Bear Hills, Falls Road community. We'd like to see improvement and we work for instance, on a new brew pub, we're working on some other projects there that we think will improve that community. So we're not anti-development, but you know we're also challenged by infill and and changes uh, that people want to make in the community, tearing down smaller homes to build much larger homes and changing the massing. And that's something that you know that's why we're part of design review to try to you know we know that's going to happen over time. We know that that in some cases Great. makes thank sense. You, thank you so and much. We want, to, for your we want to work. You know we want to be able to. Work with the community. On Thank that. you so much for your uh, Thank you. Thank you, Miss Bensley. Hey, <laughs> I am president of Joshua Forge. I am not part of this neighborhood association. I am here because I have been working um, for the last two years to try to garner support for an initiative on Charles Street, which is the eastern border of this community association. Um, Along with being a resident of Rogers Forge, I'm also a member of our local advocacy group, Strong Towns Baltimore and Towson Alliance, Green Towson Alliance. And I've also been a nurse for 38 years and very involved in initiatives trying to improve walkability, bikeability, ways for us to connect with our community without having to walk. So what I've been fighting for is a way for the thousands of residents who live east of Charles Street to safely cross Charles Street to access this wonderful community um, amenity we have at Lake Roland Park. There is a public road to a public entrance to a public park. Very unsafe to get to for those of us who live on Charles Street. Because there's no, um, the intersection, at, and I apologize, I found out about this meeting late, so did not bring pictures to you. But for those of you who don't know the intersection at Stevenson, when you cross it to the west, you land on a burned road utility poles in it. Um, it's not safe to walk on that side. There is no sidewalk on the west side of Charles. Crossing at Bologna um, lands you on a place where the greenery abuts the street, and it does pretty much all the way down to the Woodbrook Lane. So one can either dart across traffic at Woodbrook Lane or cross and walk in a very tenuous part of the street. There. Um, I have about 150 signatures on a petition. Um, I've had conversations with um, like at Kathy Forbes with Senator Shelley Hedelman. There's been a lot of verbal support. State Highway Association has come out and done an assessment. They did not approve changes saying that they are required to maintain, but improvements will have to come with an ask from the county. Um, 
So kind of bandied back and forth, and um, I would appreciate any support that the county can give to make this area safely accessible for all of us who love to use it. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate that. And speakers, remember, you're at, you have two minutes. Ms. Bensley, that's it? Wow. Okay. Thank you. All right. Does the board have any questions? Mr. Perlow. Planning staff, the last two um, plans for this development were they approved here at the planning board and sent on to the county council? I don't personally remember. Were the plans approved here at the planning board and sent to the county council? Yes. Typically, any plan that's been adopted to an master plan, it comes to the planning board and goes to the county council. Have we, for other neighborhoods in the county, done the same, approved them? I'm being honest, I don't remember specifically approving you know, plans like this in the past. In part because it's been a long time since the community plans have really been undertaken. And, but yes, the, the process is that whether it's initiated by staff or by the community itself, it comes to the planning board and then gets forwarded to the county council for adoption. And then it becomes, as Ms. Wolfson pointed out, it's, it's part of the master plan at that stage. For a long time, I just don't remember approving them in the past. In a long time I want to set a precedent of something that we haven't done. This is, this is the way that the process has unfolded for the previous community plan. Council generally just takes it and decides if they want it in the master plan? Well, a, a resolution will often initiate the process, and so the council member has initiated the request that this be undertaken, and whether or not the council member then changes things, I guess that's still a possibility. I, don't, I personally don't know if that's occurred uh, with the plans that have been submitted. Look at here. Yes. Yes. And he put forth the resolution to start this. In 2020. Almost two, three years ago. Yes. It's been a while. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Yeah, there's time warp, remember? Yeah. Mr. Halipka. Uh, a couple, I mean, this is, is in essence, though, not that different. I mean, there's, there's, I think there's a Turner Station plan, a Dundalk plan, a, a North We're Point. Over. Yeah, over. We've been, I think, have all gone through. There may have been more planning support in initiating them, but it's the same <laughs> That's my understanding. Yeah, number. but yeah, uh, I have a second. I, I am curious because the boundary is at Charles Street, and I knew of Miss Delay's um, issue. Have you, as a community, have you guys talked about, thought about how to sort of get access from the east side to the? Yeah, we reached out to State Highway. Charles Street, um, statewide. Yeah. Any other questions? Charles Street, County and City. Well, the city, Charles Street is under the jurisdiction of the city. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Ward. It's inside the area. Inside. I really miss the community, so I just wanted to make that aware to everybody on the board. I've spoken with Mr. Lafferty and he's not seen if there's any issue with me. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. If Mr. Lafferty doesn't that. think there's a problem, we don't think there's a problem. <laughs> It's on you, Mr. Lafferty. Right. <laughs> That's good to know, because I also live in the community. And I, I just want to mention that um, I read the whole um, 
report this morning, and it's pretty thorough. I can't think of anything I was left out or is an issue that I've heard that's not included. Your group has done a great job, it really has. Any other questions, folks? Anything from the planning department? Uh, no, ma'am. That, that's where we're going next, but I just want to see if there's anything you wanted to add. Okay. If there's no other questions or comments, this is the conclusion of the public hearing. The hearing will adjourn, and the board will immediately ravine to discuss and vote on the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roll and Area Community Plan. Do I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. And let's go into the next one. <laughs> All right. Well, you can do whatever you want. I've been living in the second, but I live right at the coast of this. So I live also you can right stay. Side. You can leave. It'll be soon. <laughs> it's all good. So we're doing. Pineal. We're starting now. Scavelin. <laughs> I guess we'll take our discussion to the floor. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I've never used this. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Again, the public meeting for the Baltimore County Planning Board is now reconvened and called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford for the third time, the, uh, the chair of the Baltimore County Planning Board, and I will do a roll call again. And the planning board members, please say aye. Mr. Avery. Aye. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Mr. Fotis. Ms. German. Mr. Heckman. Aye. Mr. Heinel. Aye. Mr. Halipka. Aye. Ms. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Perlow. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Paner Ms. Panero. Mr. Warren. Ms. Wolfson. Aye. Okay. This evening, we had the opportunity to discuss and then we'll vote on the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Community Plan. The staff from the Department of Planning are here to answer any other questions that the board might have before we go for a vote. Board members, is there any other questions that you have from the Planning Department before we go for a vote? So just a quick question. I mean, I'm new, but I'm curious. So the association board is comprised of two. Like, is it a good cross-section of that community that it comprises of the board and the subcommittees that kind of came up with this? Okay. Uh, what we do is we actually have the community divided out of these seven sections. And we have representation on our board for each of those sections. So what we try to do is to make sure that all of our community is represented one member of each of those subsections um, <coughs> that is the board is the representative uh, of that group. Does that, does that help you? Yes, uh, and it's all comprised of the residents in those so there are, They must be residents of the area, and we go through a nominating process, but generally most people that want to be on our board should be on our board. Any other questions? No further questions? Then I'll entertain a motion. Be it moved that the Baltimore County Planning Board approves the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland Area Community Plan and recommends it be forwarded to the County Council for appropriate action. Yeah, I, I only made a motion. I, I'd like to see us uh, put something in there about giving access to everyone to this park. And I, just, I hate the fact that any community areas don't have access. So. Is there a way to add that? Um, it's access is just not safe. So yeah, how do there's we... like no crosswalks, there's no um you're talking referring to the entrance by the old Brown Memorial. <coughs> Chair, if, I, if since there's a motion on the floor, there could be an amendment to the motion, and if Mr. Warren could, no disrespect, sir, 
articulate a little more, more clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Warren, you can handle it. Uh, I would like to add something to the plan. Encourages the county. Encourages, that's a good word. Encourages some kind of bridge system or some kind of Pedestrian system. improvement. Pedestrian, Pedestrian improvement. improvement. Or access to Lake Rowan Park. Okay. I'm trying to help you. Not a bridge. <laughs> Not a bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, just say so so Pedestrian Improvement. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Mr. Warren has an addition to the motion. Do I have a second on Mr. Warren's amendment? Amendment. Certainly. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? If not, Aye. Um, Chair. Ms. Yes. If I may, just so to make sure that I capture this accurately, that it that uh, it's an amendment to encourage pedestrian improvements to allow individuals to cross Charles Street to access Lake Rowland Park. Park. Correct. Safe access. Safe, Safe access. access. Correct. Okay, we, we, we're, we're fine. We've got it. We're good. We're good. All right, quick, quick statement. We got that. We We've got, got that. that. Okay, because this is not, public's not supposed to be able to speak in this meeting. So, folks, we've got this. Thank you. If we need your help, we'll ask, but we appreciate your comments. Mr. Yes. And this is the presentation that David, the, the community, wasn't in favor of the bike. Mm -hmm. So I, I missed that. Okay. No, no, no. They, it wasn't that they weren't in favor of it. They just had different priorities. That Because... Times have changed and the priorities have changed a little bit. So what we'll do is we're going to make a motion and then you say whether you approve it or you don't approve it. Or is there another comment you wouldn't make? Are you, are you good with that, Mr. Johnson? Are you ready for to make a motion, Mr. Lipka? There's a motion on the board. Second. Right. Second. 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 Second on the board as amended. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you have to vote on the amendment first. All right, Second. we're going to vote on the amendment. Do we, we have a second? I think we already did. And all in we, favor we already say aye. We've already voted on the amendment. Oh, my order. goodness. All We've right. already voted on the amendment. No. We've already voted on the amendment. Now we vote on the motion as amended. Yes. Yeah. We That's did. what we, I was we, going we, to. We approve Todd's suggestion. Okay. And go ahead. Second. Uh, then I, yeah. Be it moved that the county planning board approves the Ruxton Riderwood Lake Roland area community plan and recommends it be forwarded to the county council for appropriate action with the additional amendment that was approved, suggested and approved. Thank you so much. All and, right. Second. And now what we're going to do is go for a roll call <laughs> on how you feel about what was just stated. And I'll call your name. You either say yay, nay, or you want to abstain. Mr. Avery. Yes. Mr. Fotis. Yay. Ms. German. Yay. Mr. Heckman. Yay. Mr. Heinel. Yay. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Yay. Mr. Perlow. Yay. Ms. Panero. Yay. Mr. Warren. Ms. Wolfson. Yay. Ms. Brophy. Yay. Thank you. The motion carries. Before we adjourn, there's going to be one quick reminder from Mrs. Bensley. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just as a reminder, board members, we do have the capital improvement process starting up, and that'll start on January 19th. So there will be a couple of meetings um, in January and February that are going to be in person and then a few that will be virtual. I'm going to send you an email tomorrow that breaks down exactly which meetings will be in person versus which ones will be virtual. So please be on the lookout for that just so that you can plan accordingly. Thank you so much, Ms. Bensley. Yes. To the young lady in the back of us, um, you might want to consider talking to your council, and I'm guessing it's different on the, um, the Charles Street side. I'm not sure where the lines change. But the other streets that are not
not Charles Street, but are not State Highway, would be county name names. And with our capital budget coming up in the next month and a half, two months, um, we recently found that in the Pike Store area, some money through the county to do sidewalks and other things. And I think if you talk to your council person as well, you might be able to convince them that this is something, at least the part that's not on the State Highway, the State Highway is very difficult. There's no question. But the other part, what's the other road? <laughs> well, Literally they, everywhere they except for that area. Yeah. Uh, Charles Street's a bit, and then like she mentioned, the traffic. If we're going to fight on traffic, it's going to be. Thank you, Mr. Perlow. All right. Any other questions, comments, board members? You're all good to go? All right. This is the conclusion of our three meetings in one night. Good way to do it. A planning staff, we are very, very grateful for everything you do. We know you've got a lot on your plate right now, and we really appreciate everything. So I'm calling for a motion to adjourn the meeting, unless you guys want to go into a fourth. Motion. Okay, that's pretty good. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. And then we'll see you all in person on the 19th.